What's up, my friends? Jim Kilbasso here, and I want to bring to you today a, a message that is kind of business related, but also a lot of a lot more like personal related, and something that I've been thinking a lot about lately. And I had a great conversation with one of our IYCA Insider members just the other day, um, guy that's that's an awesome trainer, an awesome business person, and he just had some he had some really interesting things to say and made some interesting comments to me that I thought I kind of needed to share with more people and I that's why I love interacting with especially our insiders members who I get to I get to talk to on Facebook but then also you know having phone conversations and and personal conversations and getting to know people better means a lot and I'll kind of explain more as we go through here so the basic message here is is to stop comparing the inside of you and your life to the outside of other people's lives and what other people are talking about and saying that they're doing and what should be possible. I think social media messes us up a lot, but not only social media, um, what other, I'll call them experts, business experts are kind of making people feel like. So what happened in the conversation with this Insiders member was that he said he told me that something that really hit him hard that I uh, that I said a while back was that you know I still haven't made the the million dollar idea or uh, or struck it rich in the in the in the sports training industry um, and that most people have not and that that's okay that we're all in this you know trying to get better and 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 doing well is different than being rich. And uh, I didn't realize how much it hit him, but he told me that before I said that, he, he's been doing really well. He's kind of killing it in his, in his local market. He said that he felt like um, that he wasn't, that he was a failure because he wasn't making a million dollars on his training business because some business consulting coach or somebody um, or multiple coaches um, who market themselves as you know fitness or bi sports business um, consultants make it seem like you're supposed to be out there, you know, making millions of dollars in the sports training industry. Um, and he was really relieved to hear me say that. And we had a conversation about that where um, I kind of realized that that this this seems to happen a lot, that people, um, he was at the point where he wanted to give up because he was doing well, but he thought based on like the sales and marketing techniques of other consultants that um, he was not doing so well because he wasn't out there making millions of dollars. Um, and I had another conversation recently with uh, with another guy that I was kind of coaching and I was giving him advice uh, on on some some ways to rearrange his business so that he could be at home with his wife. He and his wife run a business and he said that his biggest struggle was that they never get to see each other because when one is at home, the other's at the business. And as I kind of helped him rethink things um, so that he could have some time with his wife and his kids, he said, that's, a, that's like the exact opposite that another business coach that I spent a ton of money on told me. And I thought, wow, that's that's crazy. Like, why would anybody not, you know, give you this advice? And I said, well, did that person, was that person ever in your shoes? And did that person um, run a business like yours and, and have these problems? Or is, is that person even in the industry? And he said, well, uh, no, not really. She's kind of, she does something else or he, I can't remember who it was. Um, and I thought, well, there you go, there you go. Like, why are we why are we listening to people talk about their businesses and what they do when they're in a completely different market? Um, and it could be different location, it could be a different um, business. People that are out there in the money making market, for example, or the real estate market, um, they may they may be looking at money differently than we do. Um, a lot of us. We're, we're out here trying to make an impact on kids' lives and other, other adults too, other human beings' lives. It's not just business for us, at least, at least not for me. 
Um, yes, we all want to make a good living and be comfortable, but it's not just about money. Whereas a lot of other businesses, you know, they're they're selling a product to make as much money as possible, and that's it. And that's okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But in the sports performance business, specifically youth performance, it's it's different than that. We're not just trying to make as much money as possible. If we were, we should get into another business where all we need to worry about is focusing on money and only money. Um, that's really just, it's just a different business. Um, and demographics are different too. The, the guy, the insiders member that I was talking to, you know, he's in a small, um, he's in a smaller city in Oklahoma. And he said, you know, I start, I started to think, you know, I was a failure because my business was, you know, wasn't going to do a million dollars. And we started running numbers and the numbers that you're going to make in a small town in Oklahoma are different than in say LA, um, or in, in New York city in, in a small town in Oklahoma or anywhere, um, bringing in $200,000 a year in a sports performance business, you might be crushing it. Like you're rocking, you know, and you're making good money and your living expenses and even your overhead expenses are much different. If you're only bringing in $200,000 on, you know, and you're in Manhattan, um, you're probably going to be out of business because your overhead expenses are going to be so high, not just overhead for your business, but your personal expenses, your living expenses, your rent might be more than, you know, more than what you're bringing in. Um, so that's just very different as well. So before you start taking advice or thinking like you're failing, um, you know, and start, uh, you know, start throwing in the towel because it's not things aren't going, you know, as well as what some other uh, business guru told you it was going to be like, um, stop and take an inventory of, of what you actually believe is going to happen in your market and with your business. And maybe, maybe talk to people that have done it. Talk to people who have succeeded and who have also made mistakes in, in this industry so they can maybe shorten your learning curve rather than somebody who has not done this business and thinks that their um, their uh, little little system, if you will, uh, their cookie cutter approach is going to work for yours because it's probably not. Every one of us has a very different business. We have a different business model. We're in different markets. We, we have different personalities. Um, we are good at different things. I will say that the number one common denominator of all sports performance and youth fitness professionals that I have encountered that have good businesses or, and or are, uh, have great careers, the, the common denominator is that all of those people are really good at what they do. They are very good at delivering exceptional training experiences to, um, to athletes of all ages. So, you know, make sure you look yourself and look, look at yourself in the mirror and ask, you know, am I really as good as I think I am? Um, am I really delivering exceptional experiences to every athlete that comes through my door? And if that's the case, then maybe you can look at some other things. But if you feel like maybe you have uh, the opportunity to um, be better at what you're doing and deliver a better experience, then that's the place to start. But um, I just want to encourage you to to not worry so much about what other people are saying you should be doing or how much money you should be making. If you have friends that are in um, I don't know, medical sales or uh, are in other industries where they're making a ton of money um, and you have lawyers and doctors and oral surgeons that are in your circles, which I do. That, you know, those, are, those are some of my good friends. Try not to worry about what they're doing because uh, the amount of money that a surgeon is going to make, for example, is probably going to be different than the amount of money that someone running a youth fitness business is going to make. And if that's a huge part of your, of your life is to make as much money as a surgeon, then I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to encourage you to, to find another business besides youth performance. And I'm not telling you that there aren't people making a ton of money doing this. There are a lot of people making awesome money, having great careers. I love my career. I feel like I'm doing great. And I have a lot of friends who are doing great also. Um, but we are also not making as much money as the CEO of Ford Motor Company. 
um, or you know Hewlett Packard or Apple. You know, that it, it's just it's a different industry. Um, you're going to have to really get outside of yourself and think outside of the box if you want to go, you know, way in different directions. So um, these are my uh, these are my words of wisdom, free words of wisdom from. Uh, I, I just realized that I had my Yoda shirt on that has free words of wisdom, but um, I hope it. I hope this maybe maybe hits you a little bit because I know that it that it is impacting a lot of other people, um, and I and I hope that you can now kind of sit back and and reevaluate uh, where you're at and and what you think is is realistic and what's important for you. So, hope this helps. Talk to you soon.